<laughs> they're just really licking. Okay, they're just on. just licking glaciers. <laughs> it looks super tough. I wonder if it'll help my baggy eye. We're standing on the location of Old Valdez. I'm <laughs> just in awe. Well, after much debate today about whether to go or whether to stay, we've decided we only have two more stretches of time off from John's work to go explore. So we are going to go ahead and go explore Valdez, even though the forecast looks pretty grim. <laughs> We're going to go so we can say that we saw it. It took us a long time to get motivated because it is like five o'clock in the evening right now. And we're just now like about ready to take off. We are leaving our tent. We didn't want to unhook the trailer when we were in Seward because there was no good place to drop it and we don't know what Valdez is going to be like. So we've decided to take the Jeep. That way we have a second vehicle to go explore with and we can leave the trailer all hooked up wherever we end up boondocking. Glad we have a scout vehicle. John is way down there with the trailer and there is no way we would have made it up here. It's morning time and we are getting everything ready. We're getting caffeinated first. Yeah, I can't think straight. We're getting caffeinated and we're gonna have some breakfast cake, AKA coffee cake. Yeah. Breakfast, and breakfast cake. The kids have always called Don't it judge us. <laughs> breakfast cake since they were little and it stuck. So yep. having that, I'm going to make some sausage and eggs too because we need a little bit of protein because we... Right. We're going on a on super a, cool adventure yeah. today. We're going on a hike. Yes, we are going on a hike on Mantanuska. Am I saying that right? Mantanuska. On Ma a glacier. Mantanuska Somebody glacier. It's currently in the 40s, so we're getting um, hats and our boots out. Lots of layers, making sure that we have coats with us because we're not sure how much colder it will be on the ice. But the weird thing is, is it's mid-August and we just looked at the temperature in Phoenix and it was 109 degrees yesterday in Phoenix. And it's in the 40s here. Okay, we're off! We're alive. It's rainy and gray. You can't see anything. Somebody did tell me at work the other day that the best time to see the colors for the glacier are when it is actually cloudy because then, then it kind of glows a little bit. Yeah. So we'll see. So if you're traveling the Glen Highway, make sure that you fuel up in Palmer before you head out because you might not find a place to stop. That was an easy process. Yeah. So um, normally it's $100 a person right now because of COVID. It was what, 205? Yeah, total. Total. So instead of 500, which we thought it was going to be, it was only 200. So, yay! It, it's funny because on Facebook, I can see all my friends posting, you know, is it too early to bust out the fall stuff? Should I, can I, can I get the pumpkin spice lattes yet? You know, and I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, 40 degrees and leaves are changing in Alaska. It's autumn somewhere. Enjoy your pumpkin spice. Invasion <laughs> purposes. <laughs> what you got there? Like, what if somebody gets stuck? Wow. When ice melts under the surface of something, it creates a big vacant hole. And this is called a kettle pond when it fills up with water from the rain and also from the ice melting from underneath. They rode gravel off the sides of the mountains and they also grind uh, grind all that stuff into a very, very fine glacier silt. And so when the silt gets saturated with water from the rain and also from melting up underneath us, we get this really funky glacier mud. 
And like the more you jiggle it, the more it liquefies, just like quicksand. This is so cool. The kids just got permission to break off some ice and eat it, or just put your mouth on the glacier and eat it, because the, the water is super pure and clean. And they are having a field day with it. <laughs> they're just really licking, okay, they're just, just licking glaciers. <laughs> This natural silt down here. Oh, that is wild. It's a sheet of ice right underneath it. Yeah. You look super tough. I wonder if it'll help my baggy eye. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Come on. It's raining now, but we don't even care. So this glacier, the ice that we're walking on is about 10,000 years old. Minerally. <laughs> well, I wonder how many people stands and touched it as they watched, walked by. Yeah. My favorite part was licking it. <laughs> yes. yes. The glacier ice was. That was your favorite ice. part? Eating the glacier ice? Because it's not like You're so normal creepy. ice. It, it takes a while to. Like, it's melt super down. hard, isn't it? Yeah. It's super hard. What was your favorite part? Of the, putting the, oh, doing the glacial facial? You got some glacier ice in there? Yep. Topping it off with some water. Highway is absolutely stunning. The views alone, just if you take the drive, is just absolutely gorgeous. This is the terminus over here, the place where the glacier terminates into the water. It doesn't look like it's that big from right here, but it is massive. Once you get to the top of it from where we were hiking, it's 27 miles long and other glaciers feed into it. It goes all the way up through these mountains over here and on the other side of that is Valdez, which is where we're going tomorrow. That right there is an AT&T cell tower, so it works out well if you have AT&T or FirstNet like I do.
Not necessarily the most level of campsites as you can see behind me, but we made it work with some creativity and leveling blocks. That being said, there are some good spots here for larger rigs with like some campy, you know, like big pull-offs and, uh, and gravel road areas. But you know us, you guys, we kind of like to be out by ourselves. And so we found this one. There are some other good spots even up on top of where that cell tower is that uh, would be amazing with the views. It's just been so rainy, we can't see any of the amazing footage that we know is just above the clouds because the clouds have been so low. But we've just gotten, we're about 30 miles out right now and the car, clouds parted enough for us to see something amazing. crisp morning on August 21st and the kids are waiting on fall like trying to catch catching leaves. leaves. Which is crazy. It is crazy, yes. August 21st here in Alaska. Oh, don't mind our trash. We have to go dump that. We made it to Valdez and today is a beautiful day. There's hardly a single cloud in the sky, which is so... So opposite of what it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday it just poured on us. We're gonna go see all the things that we can see in Valdez today. Okay, first up, breakfast. It's 10.21 because Farnsworth time. This is actually yeah. really good for us. This is good for us. So good for us. Um, we're going to the Fat Mermaid. Chloe's excited, right Chloe? <laughs> Well, breakfast was fabulous. We took a little walk around the docks down there, pondered the idea of someday traveling in a sailboat. Probably not, but you never know. Maybe we're crazy enough to give something like that a try. Like a song. We're standing on the location of Old Valdez, the town, the old town of Valdez. In 1964, the big earthquake that hit Alaska, it caused a tidal wave that took out the waterfront of the old town of Valdez. The Corps of Engineers in 1967 had basically just condemned the entire old town of Valdez and required everyone to move their things four miles to the north. That behind me is where New Valdez is. And they basically just picked up all the buildings and move them over there. So there's not really anything left here, but there are signs of where things used to be. And it is pretty incredible to see, like right here, this little piece of cement right there, 
<laughs> um, that's what's left of the village morgue. Plus, it's, you know, it's kind of a rough little gravel road, so it's fun to come out on the Jeep and you can come clear out all the way to the water, which the kids are absolutely loving. And the day is gorgeous. The tide is coming in. I think is really neat about this area is you can see the end of the pipeline. The terminus is here in the Port of Valdez. So we were on the Dalton earlier in our Alaska adventures. You can check out that video up here. And we learned all about the pipeline, which was really, really fascinating. We didn't quite make it all the way to Dead Horse. Did a large portion of it. So it's pretty cool to see where it ends here in Valdez, over 800 miles of pipeline. Standing outside of the Solomon Gulch Fish Hatchery here in Valdez, we are about to take the self-guided tour, um, which looks pretty neat. There's, you'll see tons of fish and tons of footage. There's a ladder here. We're gonna go look at it here in a second. And it looks like a self-guided tour that's gonna be pretty informative. We're pretty excited. Let's go check it out. Swim away, swim away fish. Don't go up the ladder. This was a really neat experience. I'm glad that we came here to see this. The hatchery was really neat. Um, it did surprise us a little bit too. I guess we had pre-expectations going into it. But that blocks the fish from entering into the natural stream and it diverts them into the fish ladder, which is 20, 29 steps up that they have to go up to. Once they salmon go up through that, then what they do is go into an area called the raceways, which kind of chills out a little bit. It's supposed to simulate kind of like a natural environment of what it's really like for them. Once they get up closer and into that area, then they are driven forward uh, into the spawning area. They separate the males and the females, and it reminds me very much of like a slaughterhouse, so, which is fine. I mean, this is, hey guys, this is where food and stuff comes from. So that's the way it is. I, it's kind of sad and I get that, but at the same time, you know, this is, this is where a lot of commercial fishing and how it goes. From there, the eggs go into a incubator house until they hatch. They're then known as fries. And then they raise them to a certain size. And then once they are determined size, they put them out to go into the open ocean where they don't just release them here into the bay. They, they send them out in ships and stuff to be released into the actual open ocean um, to kind of go wherever they want to at that point in time. And then all these salmon, as they get back to adulthood, remember this area and come right back here to repeat the process. Look at all of them. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, the ground is just littered with them. We brought you the before. This is at low tide. It is a mass graveyard. <laughs> it's a mass grave. Off. Chilling down on the fish over there. Hey, there's a live fish. There's only one alive fish in this like, pond. Long, I'm hungry. Well, we saw the bear <laughs> with the fish. Right as we were leaving, we caught a black bear on Chinook dinner. <laughs> and he was so we saw cute. Him, we saw him pull one right out. It was kind of fun. Yeah, and we, we couldn't get it. Or we don't have a, a good enough zoom. So unfortunately, we couldn't get very good footage of it, but we did see it tip its head in and bring it back with salmon, shake it around. It was pretty cool. 